Today I'm going to give you my review, my opinion, on the DeWalt DCS 7485 battery operated table saw. I'm Ron Polk and this is the Smart Wood Shop. If you want to get a detailed set of plans to build a smart wood shop for yourself or one of the three Polk smart benches, there's a link in the description of this video down below where you can go and purchase plans and download them 24-7, 365. This video is to show you as many details as possible on this particular saw, but mostly it's my opinion, my take, what I think about it in using it now for almost a year. DeWalt does not support the channel. They're not a sponsor. I bought this saw with my own money. I do like the DeWalt battery system, their 60 volt system. It only takes one battery instead of a lot of the other brands where you have to put two 18 volts on them to run them. I can run uh, the, the, the larger hand tools with a single battery. And that's also true of this saw. It runs off of one battery. Very easy to haul around. There's a handle that's built into the side here and I pick it up with one hand and I carry the cradle in the other and I can carry them into the smart wood shop and then, the, and then set them down, the cradle goes up in its spot and then this saw sits in the cradle so the cradle doesn't take up any extra room in the smart wood shop. The other thing that this uh, saw offers that I really like is storage on board of all the miscellaneous stuff that you need with your table saw. So there is the miter fence, the guard, a, a really nice split guard that drops in and there's a, just a lock so you don't need any tools to take it off and it drops right in and then you just uh, lift the spring-loaded knob and turn it and that locks it on. The fence itself, so when I'm putting it away, I don't have to leave the fence on top of the table, you know, making it harder to store, taking up more room. Tucks in underneath so it fits in the footprint of the saw without making it any bigger. And all I have to do is just pop two levers and it comes off. And on the back side, they also store the tools that you need to change the blade. It does have a vacuum port off the back. This is not part of it. I put these ShopVac 90s on all of my benchtop tools and any standard ShopVac size hose, the larger hose, fits right into that. So right out of the box, I give DeWalt a lot of credit for thinking the whole saw out and creating this compact saw with a handle on it that's easy to carry and when I get it to the job when I set it up, all the accessories, the parts and pieces are all stored on board. I don't have to get them out separately. Now it is a small table saw and I would not find much use for it as just this small saw. There, the out, there's not much in the outfeed behind the blade. It's just not big enough to support the material when I'm doing my rips and things. But combined with the smart workbench, which makes effectively the table saw much larger, I find that it works excellent. So let's set it up and see how it works. To mount the fence, there's two locations that it can be mounted, forward and then outboard. On the, in the forward connection, the cutting range is from zero where it's zeroed up on the blade out to 20 inches. But it will rip to 24, but to do that, that's the white scale. There's a yellow scale for the end mount, and that's, your, that's starting at your zero. And then when you mount it on the outside, then you use the white scale, which starts at four, and will go out to 24. Actually, 24 in a half. When the fence is out past where there's table support, then there is a support that just flips over and locks in place, and this is at the same height as the table saw. And then the push stick is mounted right on the side of the fence. I think that's a perfect location if you're going to use this type of push stick. This is really a different fence system than any other uh, brand of table saw I've owned. There's a locking lever, of course, to lock once you get it where you want it. But there's, there's a knob and it's got this uh, kind of rack and pinion where it just, you can um, rotate it in till you get the pointer 
right on the dimension that you want and then lock it in. It's really a super clean system. Now I've had this with multiple other DeWalt's I've had in the past. Uh, I, I had a couple of the big 10 inches that were uh, electric and then I also had one of the smaller electric ones uh, at, that was very similar to this. In fact, if you go into my older videos, uh, when I uh, first built the very first Polk Smart Station, that was when I bought uh, my first smaller one. I had the large 10 inch, which was when I built the, the very first Polk um, workbench and the Polk Workbench 2 that I had the larger 10 inch corded. So I've got a lot of experience with the DeWalt table saws and this fence. I really enjoy it. I think it's a, it's a great way to adjust. There's one drawback that I've had with all of them over the years, and that is that they will clog up with sawdust. So I found that I would use my air and have to clean them out because at some times it'd start to get a little clogged up. So you do need to make sure you keep those clean, both front and back. And this fence does lock on in the front and the back so it's very stable to raise the blade there's a handle that you rotate it takes a lot of rotations to get it up and i'm a bit spoiled with the saw stop it's one rotation from all the way retracted to all the way up there's a lever that you can uh, throw and then rotate the angle of the blade to 45 degrees pretty standard stuff they've done a good job they work they're both very smooth and they work uh, you know, I can really depend on locking it down. It's going to stay where I put it. This saw runs off of a single battery, which is really impressive. It's a DeWalt flex volt. It's their 60 volt and it had their different amp hours. So this particular one has happens to be six. And I also have some that are nine amp hour as well. You've already seen me do lots of ripping on this saw in many of the past videos since I got it. Primarily, I'm uh, ripping 18 millimeter ply or 12 millimeter ply. For this video, I didn't hook up a vacuum. Hopefully, the video caught and pay attention when I do some more ripping that there's a lot of sawdust that blows out to the left side. And that's because that's where the 90 I have uh, put on points in that direction. So if I had the vacuum hooked up to it, it does a pretty good job of picking up that sawdust that goes down. Of course, with any table saw, there's still quite a bit that falls down, but in this situation where it's cantilevered out and it's floor underneath, it's pretty easy for me to sweep up and vacuum up when I'm done. Another reason that I don't run the vacuum as much as I probably should is that it is uh, a battery operated saw, so the vacuum I have to manually turn off and on each time I use it, and sometimes I forget. Unlike with the saw stop, which is electric, and plugged into the vacuum and the vacuum's always hooked up. The vacuum just comes on and goes off every time I need it. DeWalt does provide a riving knife which mounts right behind the blade and that of course keeps the, the rip apart so it doesn't pinch and, and kick back on you. And then their fence is a pretty nice fence. It's a split fence which makes it much more usable than the solid fences and it has dust collection on it and it works quite well. To install the riving knife or the blade guard, you don't need any tools. The throat plate has a thumb lock. You just turn it and then you can pop it right off. And then there's a knob right behind the blade. You spin that out until it's loose and then either the guard or the riving knife you drop in. There's a slot and then there's a, a wider hole cut out in the middle of the slot. You drop this in its position and then push in on the knob and there's a, it's a spring-loaded knob and that locks it in and then just spin the knob to tighten it up. Throat plate is split so you can just reinstall it. As I make this next rip, take note of the sawdust that comes out of the dust collection port and also out of the left side of the saw. It does a great job of slicing right through this 18 millimeter. But let's give a look at some two by and see how it does.
One of the things about the design that I don't like is they only provide a single miter track. I'm not sure why. There's plenty of room. And if I was building a crosscut sled, I really like using the two for the accuracy I get. Trying to build one that just works off of one, it just seems like that you're going to give up some accuracy there. The miter gauge, it's chintzy. I wouldn't trust this for any kind of accuracy. Just for doing a quick crosscut or something, it, it'll work in a pinch. If you like running a dado stack, you don't have that option with this saw. I don't know if it's because it's an eight inch blade and most, most dado blades are, are eight inch, or if it's just because it would be plowing so much material that the motor with the battery wouldn't be powerful enough. I don't know the reason, but again, if you are looking for a table saw that'll run a dado stack, this is not the saw for you. For my day in and day out table saw work, I'm definitely gonna stick with my Saw Stop Job Site Pro. That's a big beast. It runs my dado blade. It runs my crosscut sled and all the things that I need it to do. And I really don't need it to be cordless. But this is so compact, so lightweight, everything stores underneath. I can pick it up with one handle and carry it, not have to plug it in. On the job remodeling and building, this will come in very handy. I could, I could see myself using it for hardwood installation, but particularly for siding when I'm doing shingles. All that ripping of shingles that I have to do, this would be a perfect saw for that. If you enjoy these tool reviews, if they help you at all, then take a millisecond and hit that thumbs up button. That helps drive the algorithm at YouTube so the video will be served to more and I can grow the Smart Woodshop family, which really helps support the channel. If you wanna make sure you don't miss any of my videos, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so YouTube will let you know when I put up a new video. Thanks for dropping into the Smart Woodshop. You stay safe and get out there and make some sawdust.